Happy Aloha Friday, everyone. Woo woo! Made it through another week. It is Pau Hana, and welcome to My Ties at Sunset. Setting the intention that we're going to have a lot of fun and a lot of positivity today. She can't even keep a straight face because we were jamming out before we got in here. <laughs> we were. And that was we were Dua Lipa the... okay. Levitating. That was the song? I just like it because um, on TikTok, that one part, it's like, you want me, I want you, baby. That's the part that, like, everybody does. Like, they'll say something like, um, oh, I need that other pair of shoes. And it's like, no, no, I don't. And then it's like, and then the shoes are like, you want me. And then the person's like, I want you, baby. Like, it's just funny. (laughs) Like, I just think it's so funny. Um, For instance, I had that kind of moment today when I went to the tractor supply store and I wanted to buy myself some baby chickens. Baby chickens? Did you actually buy baby chickens? No, I can't because they could only come in a four pack. So I wasn't ready to take on four of them. I was only wanting one uh-huh. or two. Um, but they said they only sell them in fours because people will often buy them for Easter or for like to take pictures with and then they dump them. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Isn't that terrible? But I was like, I was like literally peering into the cage today and I was like, I want you. <laughs> you know, like I, I was like, my brother was like, you really got to remove your emotions a little bit more because everything is like cute and because we were driving um out to the land and i was like oh my god look at these baby cows and then i was like oh my god look at the goats and he's like you really need to stop and or you're gonna have to become a vegetarian i don't know no i mean i don't think i'll ever become a vegetarian but our vegan i just i just like animals and i mean if they're my animals it's different right like i'm not gonna eat them unless i ne- absolutely have to but <laughs> It's but, a zombie apocalypse. But I have and you're some. Be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, the new Army of the Dead by uh, Zack Snyder is coming out. That has like uh, Dave Bautista in it and a couple other really great actors and actresses. And so I'm really excited to watch it because I love a good zombie flick. I I have I still have to watch the rest of the one with Woody Harrelson. They made the part two. Oh, Zombie Land Part Two. Yeah, I've, I've never. I actually haven't watched that one yet. You know which one was super cute to watch was. Love and Monsters. I haven't seen that either. It is super cute. And I don't think they're zombies. They're just humans who got eaten by monsters. But ah, it's it's no totally big deal. apocalypse time. No big deal. Just, you know, <laughs> people getting eaten by monsters. Like, I have some really <laughs> super fun. fun updates um, mm-hmm. for this week. I have gone out to the land. So mm-hmm. we closed on it. All is well. And I officially own a donkey. So I named him Churro the Burrow or Churro McFlurry because all of my animals mm-hmm. have like a CH to start in their first name and then a Mick something. And so I was literally sitting there like, what am I going to name my donkey? And it came out to be Churro McFlurry. So welcome to the family, <laughs> Churro McFlurry. And um, I have officially gone rancher cowgirl farm farm chick like this week i i was wearing like full-on uh farmer clothes because the mosquitoes are terrible and i've been dying to tell you about this because i have (laughs) maybe 30 or 40 bug bites like all over my body they are just these pterodactyl sized mosquitoes and i actually will post a video to patreon of them in my <laughs> rear view like backup camera they're flying yeah. around my camera and they look like birds oh gosh that's gross they're they're terrible and my poor donkey is covered in mosquitoes what do you what do you do to protect him well you know if they're if they're tame and you know they know you then you usually like spray <laughs> them with a treatment or give them like like almost like dog and and cat flea treatment and stuff uh, mosquito treatment and I bought some the other day and he's just so scared and timid that he doesn't want me to spray him so I just spray the area around him and hope that some of the mist mm-hmm. will get on him but as soon as I did that many of them uh, many of the mosquitoes like left but I don't think the previous owners actually took care of him so I think he's not used to it I have to end up brushing him I'm gonna have to like trim his hooves like I've got all these things I need to do, but I don't think he's ever had any of it done to him before. And so <laughs> Churro and I are documenting an adventure 
of building a relationship together. And eventually mm-hmm. I will be documenting how I trim his hooves and brush him and treat him for all the creepy crawlies that are out there on that land. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I worry about him being alone over there. Uh, just out on this land. I think he's a little bit lonely. We went out um, on Wednesday and my brother drove me up to the gate and I couldn't find his feed bucket because mm-hmm. I hang a, a bucket of feed off the the fence. <laughs> and my brother's like, he was probably pissed off and like kicked the bucket. And so I got out of the car, proceeded to get attacked by mosquitoes. And I mm-hmm. found the bucket like kicked, like literally far away. <laughs> so I had to unlock the fence, climb over the fence, go through, pick it up. And then I like stood in the middle of the field and I was like, churro, the burrow, I'm here to feed uh-huh. you. So I lock the gate and I get back in the truck and I look up and you see this pissed off donkey running from like several miles away, like full ramming speed. And my brother's oh. like, oh, you're in trouble. He's hungry, <laughs> you know, and he starts like backing up the truck. But the 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 donkey gets right to, up to the gate and like, Wah! like that at me. And I'm like, oh, we better no. go get the feed. So he drives me over to the feed buckets and bins. Mm-hmm. And I'm lifting these 60 pound bags to like pour the feed into his bucket. My brother yells out, Oh, look at Rancher Ty go. And I was like, Get out of here. Like, I was like, Shut the fuck up. Like, because I'm lifting these bags and he's sitting in the car because he don't want to get bit by mosquitoes. <laughs> and so, <laughs> like, so I, brave. I had like worker <laughs> gloves on. I had my boots, my jeans. I had three shirts on, mm-hmm. plus a bandana, plus my cowboy hat. And all you could see was my eyes. And I got bit on the eyelid. That's the only place they got you, though? Yeah, on Wednesday. That's the only place they got me. But I have, like, maybe 30 more bites from the day before because I didn't realize that they were going to be that bad. Yeah. So we go back out, and um, he's very happy and content with his food. Now, you have, like, um, you have like little lakes or something. Yes, we have, like, land. little retention ponds that need to be, like, we need to put, like, a fountain in the middle so the water is always moving. Um, I actually mm-hmm. found out the reason why Disney World and Disneyland don't have a lot of mosquitoes is because they don't allow for places to have standing water. And so yeah. they immediately get rid of any standing water. And that's what we're going to have to do. And we're going to buy a mosquito kind of like filter, uh, not a filtration system. It's like a mosquito treatment system that mists in the air around the mm-hmm. houses and the property. So, I mean, they are awful. My like I had a couple of them die in my car because they would get in. You know, and they were flying yeah. around. I mean, they're at least like radius wise, like probably like, well, not radius. Sorry. Diameter wise, they're as probably as big as a dime. These are mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Oh, my God. Like That's huge. I'm Cretaceous. I'm coming to visit you in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> they're from like the Jurassic the period. They're from the Jurassic <laughs> period. My, I, I told my mom that my mom is. My mom was out there on the land. She was like, well, they don't bite me. And I go, because your blood is too old. I definitely got slapped for that one pretty hard. But Oh, you should have gotten slapped. Yep. But they're vicious. Yeah. <laughs> so those those are my fun stories about my churro the burrow. Love him to bits. Everybody's excited. They're like, oh, my God, you have a donkey now. And I'm like, I can't wait to have chicks, little baby chicks and goats. And everybody's like telling us what kind of goats to get, what kind of chickens to get. I'm just excited to be able to document that. I mean, it's not every day somebody like acquires land and then starts having farm animals. And did you know, (laughs) last fun fact, and I'll stop talking, but uh, you can get agricultural exempt for land. And in Texas, you have to have over 10 acres, right? Of it has to Mm -hmm. be specifically for uh, animals. And animals are actually counted as units. And each animal has a specific amount of units that they are are classified as so like a goat one goat is 0.2 mm-hmm. units and okay a horse is 1.25 units like and cattle is like one unit and things like that but in order to ha- be ag exempt you have to have 10 acres mm-hmm. plus 2.0 at least 2.0 animal units what are chickens chickens don't count Oh, no, they're free. Yeah, they're like free <laughs> units. Um, and so that's why my, my brother was like, we got to get some goats. We have to have at least five goats and maybe like the donkey will count as one. 
What about another donkey to teach the other donkey how to behave? Or you think they'd be competitive? I don't know. I think I think they're pretty much like community animals. Um, there's a lot of like land around us and they have multiple donkeys. So we'll try. Mm-hmm. I just I hope that he learns to understand I'm not there to like hurt him in any way. Like I'm just there to mm-hmm. feed him. But I can tell he needs a lot of like care. So it'll be an adventure. I'm sure my brother was like, well, we could dress you up in some like MMA pads. So just in case you get kicked, like it won't hurt as much. And we were laughing. I said, I said motorcycle gear. We were laughing. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to wear a helmet (laughs) because I don't care. Like you can. Well, I've known like horses and donkeys that like almost kill somebody by kicking them in the chest. So Mm -hmm. I was like, maybe I'll just wear a helmet. But that would scare the donkey, right? Like me walking out there like the marshmallow man. You'd look like an alien. Yeah, I would I would look crazy and I would never want to be my mm-hmm. friend. So well, we're getting there. Baby steps. I have touched it before, but then he didn't like it when I moved too quick. So it's fine. Yeah. Well, the more you keep feeding him, maybe feed him some treat things like is our apples bad? You always see that people giving apples. Yeah, I'm not sure if apples are bad, but I, I, I heard carrots are probably not that bad because it's not as like sugary sweet. Mm-hmm. So I'll try. I'll give you an update next week. <laughs> okay. Try some different vegetables. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Google it and check and make sure. I have been. I've been doing a lot of research on donkeys. And they, I mean, they're really great animals. And they're re- they're very protective. Mm-hmm. Um, they they kind of make their own tribe. And then they protect the tribe. They're kind of like alpacas and llamas. Mm-hmm. But llamas are pretty mean, too. Mm-hmm. So um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But churro the burrow. Love. Churro the Pearl. Cute. Um, we had some exciting things that happened in Hawaii. Um, being a former volleyball player, the UH men's volleyball team, they won the national championships. And our congressman, Kai Kahele, on the, you know, in Washington, on the House floor, he actually did like a little speech. And then he had to say he was a former men's volleyball player, too. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> was, um yeah, I just really like that they got that kind of recognition. Little Hawaii, University of Hawaii. I'm an alum. I love University of Hawaii. It's the most beautiful campus I think I've ever been to. And I visited a lot with my daughter mm-hmm. on the mainland. So it's my favorite. I'm biased, though. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there, um, there was some sad news for UH. I, I think one of their star quarterbacks passed away recently. Yeah, Colt Brennan. Mm. He was born in 1983. Huh. He's he's so young. He was so young. He he was like this star quarterback and I really don't actually know enough what happened to him. I went to all the UH football games when he was playing back in the day. Yeah. Well, you know, he had a rough go. He did mm. he did great when he was in Hawaii, but he had a rough go after that, so poor guy. I think he was There's just so much talent out there, especially in that field, to play football. Yeah, I mean, I don't even understand. I mean, I understand the game. I'm just, I don't understand, like, how certain people are, like, really good and some people are not. And then some people, like, I don't know, they give Mm -hmm. up, they give up a lot. I mean, you sacrifice a lot to be in that game. To be playing sports, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Any sport. Any extracurricular, Any whether it's um, on top of school or college or just your life. <laughs> like I have um, cousins who play soccer and, you know, they have full time jobs. They're adults and they have families. That's and a they lot. still get together with like a soccer group that plays competitively against other soccer clubs. Oh, that sounds like us when we paddled. I know we <laughs> all did those extracurriculars. <laughs> I know that actually like I can barely I can barely remember like my personal life (laughs) back then because you know when you involve yourself you know immerse yourself in that kind of a sport or any any activity it kind of takes over your life and you no longer have family time so much so I had to actually drag my family into it right Um, they did come kicking and screaming but they at least we got to spend a lot of quality time together on the beach. I mean, paddling. Come on, that's on the beach. I actually think your social life was like me. 
We did a lot together. We did a lot together. <laughs> well, you lived with me. So. <laughs> but it was You're easy. Around. Yeah, that was true. I was like, hey, I would like just text you and you'd be like in another part of the house and I'd be like, hey, you want to hang out? Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't know. You kind of prioritize things in your life. And, and if like playing soccer, paddling or doing some kind of sport just helps you with your mental health and your physical well-being, I mean, I'm all for it, but. I would say that if I paddled again, knock on wood, um, Mm -hmm. that wasn't even wood sound. Hold on. I would try not to immerse myself into it so much that I would be like obsessed. (laughs) I say that. I know. There were so many people who were so obsessed. (laughs) Even us. We were obsessed. We were guilty. I mean, I had so many. I bought way too many paddles. Like I was like, why do I need all these? And then I lugged them around the around the united states so yeah i mean i have <laughs> i have enough of paddles to for every person in my canoe my six-man canoe that i don't own <laughs> i have all i have all the paddles <laughs> yeah seat one I, to six. The, I don't know why i bought a steering blade because i really suck at it it's it's not i think everybody can steer it's the when you have to do it in a race under pressure it's finesse. And then it's different. I just have like <laughs> sh- re- like raw sheer strength, but I don't have like the finesse of like putting a little paddle in the water without like jamming it in and like just turn the whole boat. Like I can't. Yeah, that was that's some. Kind I remember of that one time you said that you were paddling with um, one of my children and their boat, and then all of a sudden you spun around like three sixty. You don't even know what happened. I don't know. They and thought you were steering. They thought it was cool. We did it anyway. Whatever. I I am not a steer. You know, person. you can steer from the front. You can steer from the front, just like you can steer from the back. I'm sure you can. But you know what? Eventually, yeah. I just made one of the boys steer. I was like, "You steer, and I'll just paddle." Okay. <laughs> He's like, "Okay, no problem, coach." And I'm like, "Perfect." <laughs> I, there is no shame in my game. Like I'm literally like, you know what? I suck at this. Like <laughs> somebody else do this. I don't know why. I don't know why I never got it, but it was fun. Um, some other fun things. I actually went on Etsy because I had a credit and got mm-hmm. my tarot read by Amanda. And I'm pretty sure that anybody can probably like look her up on there. But she was great. She had some really nice mm-hmm. things to say. And I think a lot of like that kind of stuff, like tarot reading, I think they really do try to spin it in a positive most of the time because they want you to feel better. And I think mental health wise, like it was really nice to have like just some random person tell me like things are going to be OK. It's been mm-hmm. stress. It's been stressful lately just trying to juggle life and juggle everything that's going on. And, and so that was kind of fun. Have you ever had like a random tarot reading like just out of the blue? I know we do it like, you know, for ourselves. We and- do it. Um, but I had other friends who... um we do it uh, for each other all yeah. the time back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> back in the day when we had a social life before the lockdowns. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, I actually find um, tarot kind of interesting and I always get a kick out of it when I see it like in like period pieces because it's been around for so long and the history of it. Um, but I got this. Um, someone told me that tarot. Um, when a reader reads it, and this is supposedly a channeled message, that the message that is interpreted is the message, regardless of the card. And it's sometimes you read the historical re- the s- historical meanings of the cards, and sometimes you're just looking at the pictures for clues. And the reader will pick up in- intuitively on whatever the message is supposed to be, regardless huh. of what cards are pulled. So no matter what cards are pulled, there's always mm-hmm. like a message that so it's kind of like the message is being channeled through that person and it's up to that person who's reading it to interpret it in a way. Yeah, they got to pick up on it. So channeling is kind of like having a supernatural phone call. <laughs> so supernatural it's basically, phone call. yeah, I like that. So it's just <laughs> it's just, um, you know, trying to pick up on you know, I believe that we all have these teams around us that are helping us in our crazy lifetimes. And it's nice to know that they try to get messages through to us in whatever way 
Sometimes it's through another person. Sometimes it's through animals or just life circumstance and opportunities. Good and bad. I met the coolest looking dog today. Her name is Shadow. Where's the picture? Uh, I actually have a video <laughs> of it on my phone, but her name is Shadow. What kind of dog is it? She's a Sharpay Pitbull mix and is like completely all black. Nails are black. Body is black. Tongue is black. And the eyes are chocolate mm-hmm. mahogany. And I was like, you are the cutest little thing. Sweetest dog. <laughs> but um, we were standing in a in a construction project. And it's an old pawn shop that's being converted to a leather works shop. Like a manufacturing mm-hmm. for leather goods. And this guy thought the pawn shop was open. And he opened the door oh, and the dog, the dog like launched at him. And I felt so bad because the dog is scary, right? It's like full black dog. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> yeah, like that. And he was like, ah, and he like slammed the door <laughs> shut. And uh, they were like, we're not open, you know? And he's like, oh, I thought this was a pawn <laughs> shop. No, we're not open. But it was just, it was so funny. But this dog was like a, like a dark shadow, literally shadow. Uh, just lunging mm-hmm. at this guy, I felt so bad for him. But that dog was so cute. I didn't know Sharpay. I miss Sharpays. Like my mom used to raise Champion Bloodline Sharpays, and they were this. They were they were bred to be fighting dogs mm. because they have so much skin. So like, yeah, a dog could literally grab onto their neck, but they can turn and bite because it, it's the skin, right? Like they have so much extra yeah. skin that they. That they're just meant for that. I was like, man, mom used to like raise some fighting dogs. She was like, well, we didn't use them for fighting, but they were very vicious. And I was like, okay. They remind me of, you know, with all the folds. If you're like in hot weather, like I had a pug and she had some folds, you know. <clears throat> and you'd always have to like, I'd always have to have baby wipes. And I'd have to constantly be wiping really? her clean. Because in Hawaii, she would just get sweaty and... It would be sweaty in the folds. <laughs> Ew. Like, oh, you need another bath. Sweaty folds. So I'm just thinking. It's gross. If a Sharpay is like that and you're in like Texas doing that. I'm like, they, wasn't it they get a lot of They get a lot of skin infections. Like you have to, you have to really like keep them clean and maintain them. So same thing with pugs. Although I did see like a really cute meme of a pug with many, many rolls. And I think that was because the owner was overfeeding them. So are you sure? Oh. Your pug was supposed to have <laughs> folds or what? Um, well, no, it was just like, you know, around the face they'd have those. Oh, okay, around folds. the face. Okay, okay. Yeah, just like the normal ones but around the But not like the body oh, folds, kind of right? Organic. No, no, not body folds. She was actually pretty fit. Have you seen she have you seen se- pugs with a, like a sexy lots? looking pug? Oh, she was sexy, but I like Svelte. I like to call them pug. Svelte because I feel like it's very like <laughs> very streamlined. Um, have you seen those mm-hmm. pugs that are chubby though, and they have like excessive rollage? Like, I think it's so funny when they when they're like trying to look over their shoulder and they're just they just can't. I know. I love pugs. They were just so high maintenance. Purebred dogs. Purebred dogs are high, high maintenance. maintenance. Yeah. Chips, Chubs, and Cheeto are all purebred, and I'm like, you guys just are expensive. Yeah. Like their haircuts are more expensive <laughs> than my haircuts, and I'm like, all right, first of all. Y'all don't end up looking (laughs) cuter. I feel like a lot of people, they have these like designer dogs, right? And they have to get groomed. They send them to the groomer and then they get a a completely different dog back. Like sometimes they overshave Chippy (laughs) and he's got those weird googly (laughs) blue eyes. And I'm sometimes like, you are really ugly. We're not going outside until that hair grows back just a little bit. (laughs) And when he runs, he runs, his arms do like this circle thing. And he also has his mouth open because he's so excited to see me. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. my brother and I were laughing because the other day he was running like that. And he just looked goofy, mm-hmm. right? He's tripped. And his face is flat. Oh, no. So he landed on his face yeah, and went. then did like a flip. <laughs> and then what I think is so funny is like any animal that trips or slips, they always like get back up. And then they like look around first to see who saw it. <laughs> And that time Chippy did that. He like stood up and he like looked around and then he shook and huffed (laughs) because he because I saw it, which I was like really excited about. Um, I really wish sometimes I had a saying he meant to do that. Yeah. He was like, (laughs) whatever, bitch. And like walked away from me. And I was like, God, dude, I thought I was I was like really clumsy. That was like a clumsy fall. 
plus a perfect yeah. cart, like cartwheel roll thing. So dumb. <laughs> he was just showing off. <laughs> He's a like gymnast. That. I don't know. Has your dog ever <laughs> slipped in front of you and you just like watch her tumble? Um. Okay, so her nails are a little long and I'm guilty of that. And we have um, certain areas of our house, like on my parents' side, they have wood floors. Yeah. And so when she um, goes over there, she there's um, carpet in a, in a section before she hits the wood floors. She just grabs and she takes like lightning, you know, she just goes off and she zooms over the carpet. And then as soon as she gets into the part where it's wood floors, she has no grip. <laughs> And she just slides and skids. Are you kind of are you gonna record and put put a sound of like that? I don't. There? I don't think she can. I don't know if she can. Um, she is. She's not been running so much lately. Oh, poor she's getting Ginger. a little older. Ginger, I know, shady lady. She's living. She's she's living her retirement years. <laughs> Man, I used to give her such a hard time. I would like look at her and be like, hey, Ginger, sup? You know, like, and she would look at me with those like little eyes and I'm like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. and she she always like, I don't know. For some reason, whenever you look at a dog and you're just like, what did you do? Like they get guilty real quick. Like so guilty. Mm -hmm. She's. Oh, no, don't stop recording. She's so like, smart. She knows. She you knows pause for what, a second. Um, I don't know what happened. Your time. FaceTime pauses a lot. You pause all the time. That's fine. I can still hear you. Yeah, I can still hear you. I just That's keep fine. going. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Ginger. Ginger's I didn't hang up dog. on you this time. No, I know you didn't. <laughs> that one time you did because you were poking um, at your ear pod. Like your ear pod. And you were I like, bye. And I was like, this bitch. Yeah. She hung up on um, me. I didn't mean it. Yeah, you did. I Sorry. took I, I took some notes. I'm going to tell you right now, there is this controversy in Waikiki on the uh -oh. beach. There um. is this company that um, they rent beach equipment, like um, lo lounge chairs and umbrellas and surfboards and things like that. And the Hilton is also famous for having their little rental of beach toys. Um, and stuff right by their lagoon and the Hilton is mad at this other company because they're stealing business but in Hawaii all beaches are public nobody owns the beach and the controversy is that um, these companies Hilton and this other little small company um they're like, hey, you can't just go put your things down on the beach. And he actually got in trouble because he put out like they caught him with like 18 chairs <laughs> right by the water's edge, all lined up. And he supposed to be doing it for people who rent it. Right. But it's intimidating if you're a tourist and you come to the beach and you're like, well, who are these chairs for? And why are they on the best spots on the on the beach? That's true. And it's like they're copying they're copying the beach and it's there's a lot of locals who are like who do these companies think they are? The beach is public. The tourists should be able to sit in the nice spots too and they can come with their own beach umbrellas and beach right. chairs just like the locals. Well, no saving seats. <laughs> I agree with that just just because the all the beaches are are you know public public space, but um Competition is always healthy, right? Yeah. So somebody told me today, like, competition is usually healthy because you're, mm -hmm. you, like, kind of stay on your toes, right? Like, you produce, you still are going to produce quality products because you have somebody else competing against you. But where mm -hmm. we run into problems, um, I'm helping somebody with a business at the Renaissance Festival. And one of the things that he was saying was that people tend to copy patterns where they copy their clothing that they make. They make very unique mm -hmm. clothing. And people are starting to copy that and uh, sell it. But how do you prevent yeah. that? I mean, yes, competition. You know, and that's why we don't we don't really uh, look on to monopolies that great. But but there are several monopolies in Hawaii because you guys are so restricted and isolated, right? Um, but mm -hmm. 
to that story, I would say, you know, it's really nice to know. I did not know that all the beaches are public. All the beaches are public. Yeah. You can go on any any beach except for the ones that are um, like on the private estates or protected. Oh, no, no, no. Not on any any private estate there. That's if it's in front of its coastline. It's all really public. So like Lonnie yeah. Kai, I could like actually... just roll up onto the beach that's in front of like those big estates. It's probably yeah, frowned upon a little bit, but. Well, you can't go on their property right. on their property line. Um, well, if you're oceanfront and you only have a wall, it's your wall. That's your property line. But um, then there's other people who live beachfront around the state and the vegetation line is the end of their property. Okay. So you can't literally go into the vegetation line to their backyard. All beaches in Hawaii are public. So even where Oprah lives on Maui or her famous house in, um, where is her house in, <laughs> it's going to come to me. She's having a brain fart. <laughs> Hana, Hana. Okay. So Oprah has her property in Hana and there's beaches all along her edge of her property, but anybody can be on those beaches because it's all public. You just can't cross into the vegetation line where over her property line is okay well that's a great psa for all of our listeners out there mm -hmm. you can be on any beach. there are <laughs> there are islands like um, rabbit island and goat island which are out by makapu'u side those are federally protected and if you land on there even if you crash um <laughs> you can be federally fined and you will be arrested I don't know why they don't find people Actually, for going on the mokes and like bothering those birds. If you see something or someone who's a in a place that they shouldn't be, yeah, yeah, then I don't, I don't know. know. You can. There's DLNR made a made an app, and you can report things if you see things like our turtles. The turtles are protected. Oh, the monk the seals are protected. Turtles. That's and, so cute. Um, that little we baby actually monk have seal with its mommy down in Wikes. I so know. Cute. Brand new little monk seal. Um, but all of these species, they're protected and you can't touch them. You can't go near them. Um, and there are volunteers who sit and they, there was a problem just um, this past few weeks while that pup was there that people were walking their dogs and letting their dogs go up to the monk seal. And I'm sure so that dumb. they got fined. Good. <clears throat> but because the, the dogs there's will a kill tourist, it. There's a photo of some tourist standing over right next to I the monk seal. And he, of course, got arrested. You're going to pay big fines. You can't touch them. Poor thing. You can't go near them. They're just chilling, you know? Mm -hmm. Like they, they don't they don't mess with us. We don't mess with them. I saw a video of another monk seal trying to get close to the baby and the mom got mad like i guess they were both sleeping and the baby oh, yeah. was sleeping she, and she was... like she like belly flopped on top of that baby that poor thing was like wow i'm awake you know, like, I what know. Happened? <laughs> it was so funny because the baby was like got scared and then the mom like belly flopped on top of it and then put her flipper over it and i was I like know. that's such a mama bear moment but i mean i just i just think it's so funny like when i look at videos right now of like hawaii i'm just like man that shit's funny, dude. Like that's that makes the news, you know. I remember being out paddling several times and the monk seals, they're so curious. And they come and they swim under the canoes and they they pop their heads up and they look at you. And you're like, just like, up? Oh, you look like a puppy dog. You look like dogs. Their faces are like puppy dog faces. Like ginger. And they're just so cute. Legit. I know. Well, they're more fat faces, like pug faces. They're just super cute. <laughs> they have that glossy-eyed look <laughs> looking at you, and you're like, oh, they hello. They do. Um, oh, I, I love animals. Animals are just great. I remember doing I water changes. Where were we? We were going around past the airport out in the ocean. <laughs> and we were doing water changes. And we jumped into the ocean and there was a monk seal there. And I was like, oh, no. But he just looked at us like this little dog just floating there with us. And then as soon as our canoe came by, he was gone. I would have been funny if it was like nibble, nibble, nibble. 
don't know. Like it on was your just, toes. I think you know it was how, more like, shock, like, like move a lot who? in the <laughs> nibble, nibble, nibble. <laughs> That'd be funny. Mm, Thank God tasty. that did not happen. Nibble, nibble, nibble. That would have been funny. What would you do if a monk seal nibbled on your toes? Well, first, I wouldn't think that it was a monk seal. I would think it was something else. Oh, with you would sharper like teeth. freak out and start panicking and start flailing a lot. Yeah, that is that's that's the ocean. <laughs> we I were really out there. I really don't like it when the fish like come and nibble your toes. Like whenever I would go in the ocean, I'd always feel like a little like poke poke, you know, like because they don't chew, they poke, right? Mm-hmm. So they just kind of like. Yeah. Like that at you and I'm like, oh my God, what is that? I think the worst thing is like when you're sitting on the beach, on the sand, just your butt on the sand, you know, and the crabs, they (laughs) come up from the sand and they pinch your butt. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, oh dear. I've never had that happen to me before. So I'm not sure. Maybe they have poked me and I just don't realize it, but... I've seen those little crabs. They come out of the holes and they're like, boop, boop, and then they go back in. Yeah. <laughs> you're sitting there all peaceful, just enjoying the ocean. And then you're like, what is poking me on the butt? <laughs> and Definitely crabs. some crabs. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. got crabs in Hawaii when they sit on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, I love the, um, I guess they're like jackknife crabs or something like that. They have the bigger claw right in the front. Have you ever seen them? Uh, I know what you're talking about, but I don't think we have those here. I, I've seen them a couple times on like some beaches and I love how they like come up and they've got this big old claw on the front and they look angry mm-hmm. at you with this one claw. And I'm like, seriously, I could go <laughs> on the other side of you with your baby claw and you couldn't get me. Mm-hmm. But it's funny. They, they like use that one claw to like reach out to you and then you're already like on the mm-hmm. other side of them. And I'm like, really, bro? Come at me. They're like, come at me, bro. Come at me. Clip, 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 you know, with their big old claw. And I'm like, you are so lopsided. Get out of here. They're funny, though. It's funny what nature does sometimes to creatures. I can't believe that those little crabs, or maybe there are different species of crabs, but so many times we've done, like, we're out paddling and we're picking up debris in the ocean and we'll pull it on board on the canoe and all of a sudden little crabs escape and they're biting your toes they're pinching your toes <laughs> and everybody's screaming and in the boat like, oh my god this has this has crabs on it <laughs> oh my gosh yeah that's, a, like, that's a hard no for me not, we have to take the trash out of the ocean we can't leave it here there's so much trash in the ocean i remember paddling and i just like want to pick up everything you know the one thing that i really didn't like finding was a lot of balloons oh yeah because people like I don't know, they have celebrations or whatever, and they just let the balloons go. I'm like, yeah. that, sh- that shit will end up, like, around a turtle yeah, or a bird. And I'm like, this is really not cool. It's not We've cool. cut net off uh, turtles out there. Yeah. I, I had, It's hard to, like, want to carry a knife with you while you're out paddling because everything rusts. So it's like, <laughs> you just got to wash it really good every yeah. single time. Or just carry a pair of scissors. I mean, scissors are probably easier than a knife. You're yeah. not ending up cutting. Yeah, we have... I- I think one time I had, it was around a bird. I mean, and it was fishing line. It was so hard to hold on to because it like just cuts your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's bad. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there who do end up like looking for animals out in the ocean and try to help them with the lines and stuff. So it's probably so liberating for the animals to like just not have that around them anymore. So I like watching videos like that where they cut the lines and then the the animals like turn Mm -hmm. around and thank them and then they they're on their way. So cute. I they know. Seas. They're so smart. They just know. They're so grateful. Yeah, they are. Well, how wonderful. This has been a really <laughs> fun sort of like chat about animals. Uh, I can say I really don't like mosquitoes um, <laughs> and all the things. But yeah, what else do we want to talk about? Um, Hokulea and Hiki and Nalia are about to go voyaging again around the Pacific. And tell us, tell, tell the audience what, what that is, what those are. They are ancient Hawaiian or Polynesian voyaging canoes. Like and the ones in Moana. Moana. Just yes. for like reference. They're the big, <laughs> the big giant canoes. Yeah. But they, they traveled all around the Pacific and like, it was like for three years they were out there from like 2000, 
uh, 14 to 17. They came home in 2017 one of, from one of the voyage. I think it was Hiki and Nalia. But um, I remember like all the canoe clubs were being asked to escort these voyaging canoes to each um, stop. So <laughs> as it went around the island. So it was such an honor to get to do that. And you're on your little tiny canoe. <laughs> You yeah, know, the little six man canoes. And, there's and then you canoe. are like next to the one that's like, I mean, it's the size of a really small yacht, you know, a yacht. Mm-hmm. It's huge. People and you just live on so that tiny. for a year of like a year at a time for, well, three years. They did that. Oh, three years. They did that, that tour. The Pacific tour or whatever. That was yeah. a pretty big and they're deal. They're going to do it again. They're going to do it again starting next year, May. Awesome. But I know that um, when they were in California, I told my aunt, you need to go. You need to go. You just need to go down there to wherever they are. And you get to walk on board and they get a little tour. And it's so magical. It's really It's amazing what people can create uh, without technology. go out there. Yeah. And then in the ocean. And I think they actually use the stars they do not use a lot of technology they, they try to avoid it right no like technology because they want to be the, as they're like, teaching right. the polynesian style navigation by by the stars i'm sure they have like sort of a safety protocol in case something bad happens right they can use technology um you know when they came around they had escort boats power boats escort boats oh okay so they actually have people like next I, to them wow yeah, I feel like they well, this, ha- always it, have that, you know, f- for emergencies, if you have to like run somebody to a hospital or something, you can, you need. A and that boat. is a pretty priceless piece of like history and culture. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would imagine if the weather was like really bad and they couldn't avoid it, they would need help. Um, yeah. Saving the actual vessel. So, yeah. Yeah. Really fun. So hopefully, well, you'll keep us updated. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. I mean, right now they're just doing uh they're going to take a year this year until next May. They're going to do like practice with their crew to get them so they can earn their sea legs. Right. <laughs> and learn Turn how to up. Yeah. survive. <laughs> I mean, that the lifestyle actual paddle that, at, you know, the aft of the canoe is is a big, huge paddle. It is huge. And I know I can't steer it. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be on that ship ever steering. <laughs> my funny. um, it's a my huge paddle. Ho- I remember when they f- they came in. Um, one so it was like the day that they came into our side of our beach on the windward side um, from Kailua. Then I paddled that, and then I think it was just the following week that my halal performed for them in Waimanalo Aww. as they went around. So different halals perform. I was there for when the halals performed in Kailua, but then we were the halals performing in Waimanalo. It was really, it was kind of magical for me. You're part of history. Yeah. I really, I just love immersing into that culture. Mm -hmm. I agree. We don't get enough of that uh, nowadays. I just, especially with the pandemic, we were all like kind of just sheltered in place. So, yeah. But now... Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. That's uh, another symbol of like hope and, you know, freedom. Yep. Is that we get to appreciate these moments again. Well, on that note, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us for another wonderful uh, Mai Tais at Sunset, mm-hmm. Pauhana, Aloha Friday. And go ahead and check us out, Mai Tais at Sunset.com. I have a, my first blog post up. Mm-hmm. So it's not really that exciting, but it is a to be continued and I will continue writing more and more as time goes on. And also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Mm-hmm. And YouTube. And thank you to all our Patreons. Yes, thank you to all our Thank patrons. you to all our patrons. <laughs> check us out on Patreon. <laughs> we love you, patrons. Yes. Really appreciate it. Thank you, you so much. And until we meet again, ahui ho.